At 3.15 on June 22, 1941, a force of more than 3.6 million troops, over 3,000 tanks and 2,700 aircraft crossed the USSR border during Operation Barbarossa. Within a fortnight, 300,000 Red Army soldiers were captured and 2,500 tanks and 250 of the aircraft were taken out. On September 19, forces of Nazi Germany captured Kiev. On October 2, German forces began an all-out offensive against Moscow. However, by December 6, it became clear that the Wehrmacht was too weak to capture Moscow and the attack was put on hold. There were 653,924 Soviet and 400,000 German casualties by January 1942. Numerically, it was the victory for the Wehrmacht, but actually marked a strategic turning point for the Soviets. Not only did the Soviet capital hold, but the Red Army rapidly counterattacked the ravaged German army, pushing it back. After repelling the Germans outside Moscow, time was working against the Nazis, who were not just falling behind in manpower, but running low on oil. Hitler now ordered incursion into Soviet oil-producing Caucasus that would, it was hoped, in one foul swoop stop the Soviet tanks and empower the German panzers. But he got distracted by the key hub of Stalingrad. His forces were too spread out and he was doomed for a fall. After a five-month city-wide street fight with air support and heavy artillery, Germany's once mighty 6th Army was encircled and surrendered. As a result, Germany suffered 300,000 dead and 92,000 captured soldiers. After the failure of the attempt to capture Stalingrad, Hitler had ordered the advance from the Oral Salient to the north of Kursk and from Belgorod to the south. Both wings had to converge on the area of Kursk. The Battle of Kursk was the first time a German strategic offensive had been halted before it could break through enemy defenses and penetrate to its strategic depths. During the attempt to smash Soviet defenses, Nazis lost half a million soldiers, 1,500 battle tanks and 1,696 military aircraft. Thus, the campaign had become the next strategic Soviet success. The USSR juggernaut began rolling in earnest with the advance towards the Nazis. In November, the Soviets broke out of their bridgeheads on either side of Kiev and captured the city. In the fall of 1944, the whole Nazi-occupied territory of USSR was liberated. Following the success, Red Army started military actions in Nazi-occupied Europe. In a series of battles, the Soviets liberated Romania, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, Hungary, Poland and East Prussia. Essentially, the war was won, and now it was a race to Berlin between Russia and the Western Allies. Advances were rapidly achieved, but with relatively high loss of life among soldiers who had managed to survive nearly the entire war. The year was filled with some of the most heartening episodes of the entire global conflict. The liberation of Auschwitz and other concentration camps, the routing of the Nazis from Eastern Europe, the collapse of the Third Reich, and the end of the bloodiest conflict in history. At 2.10 a.m. Moscow time on May 9, 1945, the sonorous, measured voice of radio announcer Yuri Levitan announced, Germany has been entirely vanquished. However, the festivities did not obscure the costs. In the Soviet Union, at least 27 million people were dead out of a total of 55 million fatalities, while many cities, towns and villages lay in ruins. After the iconic parade in June, there were no celebratory marches for two decades. Yet the Great Patriotic War, which started for the Soviets in 1941, united the entire nation and remains a centerpiece of Russia's consciousness.